University in Washington, D.C., and I am going to talk about video in Wikipedia. So I'm a journalism professor by, tr by trade, but I've been a Wikipedian since 2003. Some of you might have known, know I had a book about Wikipedia um, called The Wikipedia Revolution, and this is kind of the next level out that I'm looking at right now in terms of research, and I definitely want feedback from folks who tried some experiments with video, and I'd love to get views from all of you. Manuel Schneider here is gonna do some of the Wiki TV tomorrow, I think. Yeah. So I think we're the, I think the only two I can see on the schedule dealing with video and Wikipedia, to my knowledge. So uh, let's talk a little bit about, uh, oh, one other thing I just want to mention. By the way, there is a museum exhibit about Wikipedia that's gonna come out next year in 2014 just down the highway from the Wikimedia Foundation at the Computer History Museum. So just to give you the heads up, I'm helping to curate this exhibit, and we had a session yesterday talking about some of those issues. So if you're interested at all in the museum side of things, feel free to let me know. So one of the reasons why I thought this was a, a, a topic that was interesting for Wikipedia is that one of the things I do in journalism is to teach students how to shoot video, do video storytelling. And one day I just thought for a second, you know, Wikipedia has a potential for great storytelling, and I don't remember ever seeing video in Wikipedia, at least in any meaningful way. How many of you have seen a video attached to a Wikipedia article before? Good. Audio. Audio, but not, maybe not video, right? But a lot of you, like, maybe once or twice, but it's not a common thing, right? So how many videos, just in English language Wikipedia, 4.2 million, how many articles do you think have video in them right now? Any guesses? 10%? 1 percent. 1%. Pessimist. 0 0.1, couple thousand. 0.1, couple thousand. 100. 100. Anyone else? I saw an animated GIF one. Right, right. I guess if you kind of animate GIFs, then you can even put it up even more, right? But if we take the wisdom of the crowds approach, which is average all the numbers you put out there, it's about right. It's about 0.1%. 4,000. Now, it's really hard to get this number, but Ward Cunningham, fortunately, has this very fast parser. You can take a whole dump of Wikipedia, look for OGV files, look for M WebM, look for all these type, different types. So there's no clear way to get an accurate picture of this. Uh, but then if you do a spot check of those 4,000, just randomly click on them and just kind of look at the visual quality and the storytelling and the relevance, I'd say in the back of the napkin, only about a third of those videos are actually useful in those articles. Sometimes you saw as kind of a strain to say, oh, this video is kind of related to this article, I'm gonna put it in there. All right, so that's not a great state of affairs. We're talking about a few thousand articles in English language Wikipedia that have meaningful video. So for example, when you look at articles about sports and human motion and things that you wanna see things happening, for example, the article on soccer or football in English Wikipedia, no video. Article on dance, no video. And this is pretty standard. You know, these are not just cherry picking. You go look at most any article about human motion and movement, there's no video. And I think this is pretty, a pretty big opportunity, a deficiency of Wikipedia, but a pretty big opportunity as well. So if you look at the former Encarta and the current Britannica, they actually do have a pretty rich collection of multimedia, but that's mainly because they're for-profit companies that could pay for those things. We're handcuffed in a different way, right? So one of the reasons why this became an interesting topic for me was actually Ward Cunningham, this is just a two minute quick history of this. Ward Cunningham, if you didn't know, was a CTO of a small company for about six months, just as kind of a, a, a I wouldn't call it sabbatical, but a little mini uh, short term CTO stint. And he just so happened to be working in a company that was in my hometown where I was living at the time in Venice, California. So we had a lot of time to sit down and have lunch and talk about things. And the funny thing is that the things he was running into in his company were exactly what I was running into as well in academics. And one of the things that he was doing at this company called Citizen Global, which was one of many companies, not just in Southern California, but globally, was how do you use your mobile phone now as an efficient and useful video capture device to collaborate with other people around the world, right? So you might have seen one of many apps on your iPhone or Android device saying, shoot video, upload it, put it in the collection and help edit together all this collective video that we have. Well, the problem with this footage call, as they called it, saying, I want video from Spain, I want video from Brazil, I want video from US, shoot me a day of the life of a teenager in your town and we'll upload it, was that they're very low quality submissions. We're talking 95 to 98% unusable stuff. 
okay? And there's different reasons why this is. Mainly because people have very low visual literacy. You're not sure what the end product's gonna be. Um, you're not sure how you should shoot it, what the audio should be look, uh, looking like, what kind of quality you have in your phone. So it was actually very, very hard to do anything effectively. For example, this is a screenshot of what Citizen Global is trying to do. This company no longer exists. You can't even see what they were trying to do. And the, they only you know, started this a few years ago. So, but you can see, it says, call for footage. Tell President Obama why you matter. This is one example of what they would do. But they would also have high-profile client, clients like Levi's Jeans or the State Department to try to work on video projects. And what we ran into is that while reading and writing text are very closely linked, right? when you learn how to read a book, you're more than halfway there to writing text because they are one and the same. Watching video gives you no insight whatsoever into creating video, right? Anyone who's got two-year-olds like I do, you can plop them in front of a TV and within a minute they're learning, they understand, right? Our brains are either lizard brains or our brains evolved over years, can process lots of visual information and make sense of it. But in terms of creating video, it's a much harder endeavor technically, but cognitively, you need to know a lot of stuff behind the scenes to make logical and compelling video, right? So this is a huge asymmetry in terms of being able to watch video and being able to produce video. So how do we get people there faster? And that's the question Ward and I chewed over for a few months. And the problem is, com the common problem is teaching video is very hard. And one of the solutions that we use in journalism school that Ward really picked up on was the fact that whenever I train students in a lot of journalism schools and journalists, we always train folks with a, what we call a five shot pattern. And I'll tell you that in a second. We shoot a close up of a hands of a person. We turn the camera around, we shoot a face of a person. We do a wide shot of the person in their environment. We go back in and do an over the shoulder shot. And then we do a fifth unusual shot. And the reason why we do this is it gives a formula for them to get good footage right away. And Ward is always looking at the world in a way that only Ward can. And he said, that's amazing, that's a pattern. And if you know how he started wikis in the first place, it's because he thought that programmers should share their programming patterns with each other, right? I found a way to sort a list really fast. I'm gonna upload my code, and Rob, on the other side of the planet, can download that code, optimize it, and re-upload it, and we can share stuff. And he said, well, why aren't we doing this with video? Right, we have patterns of video storytelling. We should be using these in the process of teaching video, and especially people with mobiles who've never talked to each other around the world trying to shoot for the common uh, for a common story. So, again, wikis were meant to share patterns. How do we do this with video patterns? Before long, a standard news report, visual language, established itself. One that... So the thing is that we actually do have a pattern for news or pattern for stories. And this is a kind of a funny video from the BBC that was meant to be humor, but it actually is really insightful because it basically says, we now have this pattern for news reporting, and I'm sure when you watch this, you'll recognize a lot of these things. Before long, a standard news report, visual language, established itself, one that's immediately recognizable to anyone. Me has this report. It starts here, with a lackluster establishing shot of a significant location. Next, a walkie-talkie preamble from the auteur, pacing steadily towards the lens, punctuating every other sentence with a hand gesture, and ignoring all the pricks milling around him like he's gliding through the fucking matrix. <laughs> and posing a question. What? comes next. <laughs> Often something like this, a filler shot designed to give your eyes something to look at while my voice babbles on about facts. Sometimes it'll slow down to a halt, turn monochrome, and some of those facts will appear one by one on the screen. This is followed by the obligatory shots of overweight people with their faces subtly framed out, after which the report is padded out with a selection of lazy and pointless vox pops. Um, usually get some inane chatter from people. I think they do have too much. I think what we want to hear is actually what's happening and not what other people think of it. I, I hate this sound of so yeah. I, I, I don't want some punter's opinion usually. No. Another bit of dull visual abstraction to plug another gap now before the report segues gracefully into a bit of human interest courtesy of some dowdy man opening letters in a kitchen and explaining how he's been affected by the issue. I don't really, you know, there's a person talking to me telling me what's going on and I don't really listen to what they're saying. It's just news. It's just news. 
He unfortunately was boring, so to wake you up, this is an animated chart, this is a silhouette representing the average family, and this is a lighthouse keeper being beheaded by a laser beam. As we near the end of the report, illustrative shots of pedestrians and signs and a pipe at a window, and then the final summary, ending on a whimsical shot of something nearby, accompanied by a wry sign-off. If you're lucky, a bit of wordplay fit for a king, or in other words, a regent's treat. Charlie Brooker, Newswipe, London. Right, right, exactly. So, you know, the funny thing is that there's nonsense in that piece, but we recognized all the patterns, right, because we've watched news reports over and over and over and over and over again. So if we can deconstruct these things that we all know really well into things that people can actually capture in chunks, we actually have a great way of leading people down the path to creating better video, and hopefully not just templates of this existing video, right? But unfortunately, news is about getting things out on deadline, and that's why 80 to 90% of the news that you see follows this exact pattern, right? It's familiar, it is comfortable, it has been optimized over time to be exactly the right amount of each thing that you view, and that pattern helps us. And if you think about it, Wikipedia articles are exactly the same thing, right? Info box, lead paragraph, section here for, the, for, uh, for history, section below for reference, but we all love Wikipedia articles. I'm not sure we love news like this, but you know, this is a pattern as well, right? So it's really interesting how this is something that mainly humor writers and comedy folks have latched onto, right? If you look at com comedy like The Daily Show, if you look at a website called TV Tropes, they've actually broken down different, you know, uh, different themes in video that they are cataloging in their own wiki. Um, or if you've seen Community, the primetime TV show, they actually do a lot of, you know, funny versions of video patterns. So it just is meant to say that we actually have patterns in video, how can we use these things? So I won't go into some of the details here since we're running behind the time, but let me show you what these five shots I just described look like in practice. So this is one of the training videos I used for my classes in journalism, and this is actually part of the sandbag article now in Wikipedia, if you look it up. And it starts again with a close-up on the hands of a human subject, close-up on the face of the human subject, a wide shot of their environment, an over-the-shoulder shot when you move back in, and then an unusual shot. So take a look at this. This is a sandbag video. <coughs> You'll notice that audio is as important as video if you're doing effective video, right? Hearing the sand, hearing the ocean, hearing these actions really make a difference. We'll see some other videos where there's no audio and it feels very uncomfortable. Okay, so everyone see that? So it's, it's five shots. This video is only about 20 seconds. We showed a lot of information in those five shots. Whereas a lot of the video you see on Wikipedia or even your, what I call your, your Uncle Murray's birthday video of your fifth birthday, you never want to watch that stuff. It's too boring. There's not a lot of information, right? So the reason why this system works is because you basically answer five questions in five shots, right? By doing close-up on the hands, you, sit, you immediately get the audience or the viewer interested. Say, what's going on? If you get them to say, what is that, you've already won by interesting them, right? If you have a wide shot of this whole room, the person's eyes scanning around, what should I be paying attention to? I'm, you're wasting my time. By having a close-up on the hands, you're, get, you're honing them in on one thing and one thing only, what's going on. The close-up of the face tells you who's doing it. The third shot tells you where they're doing it. The fourth shot tells you how they're doing it. You're basically going over the shoulder, combining the first three shots together in one shot. And then the fifth one is kind of an unusual one. It's going to depend on the story that you're doing. So in journalism or movie making, we really like this method because it says, right away, five shots, five questions, five answers, you're engaged, right? And if we can get this technique into uh, making more video for Wikipedia, that could be a real advantage. Are we in the same order? Or? Well, the nice thing is that this order is the ideal order, but you can rearrange these not almost randomly, but you know, you can rearrange a lot of combinations and they still work logically. Yeah, so this is a nice method just for doing that. Okay, and the reason why we like this is it starts with the best shot first, what's going on, and especially because we're dealing with web video, the screen size is very small, right? Anything that's not a close-up just looks like a tiny, tiny little image that you can't make out. So close-ups are especially important when you're looking at video not on a 42-inch plasma screen, but a little thing like this, and even more so on mobiles like this, right? So close-ups, close-ups, close-ups. 
Um, so again, engages the audience, enlightens the cognitive load with good continuity, five shots that work together. Okay, again, we said that the sequence always cuts together this way. We teach students to shoot in this order. One, two, three, four, five. Just do it in that order. Of course, it works with human subjects. If you're doing something like Wiki Loves Monuments and they're static things like buildings or statues, you've got to find some other techniques. And we actually have other patterns for things like that, for Wiki Loves Monuments and other types of projects. Okay, so how do we get to do this in Wikipedia? So one of the things that we did this spring was to encourage students or classrooms to use this technique. So one of the things that has been uh, done every year is that one professor at Alverno College, Jenny McCauley, who is involved with glam stuff, she gets her students to shoot video and it's been kind of a haphazard uh, endeavor every year. She really doesn't train them in camera work or doesn't train them in editing and they just somehow get video into Wikipedia but it hasn't been very uh, coherent. So we decided to kind of reboot the old Lights Camera Wiki project into something called Wiki Makes Video. One of the problems with Lights Camera Wiki, which was a very cute name and was successful about two or three years ago and hasn't had much activity, is that I polled some folks, I think Lodvik, you were one of the people, I polled and said, does Lights Camera Wiki make any sense to you? And I think he sent me bail back and said, I have no idea what that means. <laughs> and I said, well, Lights Camera Action, you know, Hollywood, when they make film, they say Lights Camera Action. And people said, really? I have no idea. What do you do? So I said, we gotta change this name. We gotta put video in the name, because you'll never find this project if you're searching for video, All right? So we we're training Wikimedians on how to do better shooting and visual literacy here. So we built, uh, built on Jenny McCauley's work, we did a remote Skype training session for our students, and I think they came out with some pretty good stuff in the end. So let me show you some examples. This is the page that is the Wiki Makes Video coordination page, uh, which has a lot of stuff. I had two grad students create the training materials here. We basically broke down uh, the mul multitude of ways that you could do video into three basic ways, because we thought it was just too complex to say, you know, just jump in feet first to understand everything about video. It's actually quite complex. So we said that the three activities you want to encourage are either shoot, you've got your own camera, you've got your own equipment. If you know how to do it, absolutely shoot original material. That's the safest in terms of copyright and original material. Or you can clip Internet Archive, Wikimedia Commons. We have a lot of video that hasn't actually been put into articles. So go in and research and you don't have to shoot anything. Just make sure it's clearing uh, copyright, Creative Commons or whatever, and put it into the Wikipedia article. And that's an activity you can get involved with. Or suggest. All right, look at articles like soccer and dance and say, why don't these articles have video? And you can put them into a queue and other folks can come around and help put videos into those articles. So we thought these were the three simplest ways to get people involved with the video. Um, and we actually have training videos here. There's one of my students showing you how to do the five step process in a video and then some narration on how to walk through that process. So, so this is an example from Jenny McCauley's class which I think is one of the lower end ones, right? It's basically a camera on a tripod and it's showing you how to do a Serbian, how to make a Serbian dessert. Not the most exciting stuff in the world, right? You actually <laughs> want to see a second camera person do close-ups, move around, and show different things going on here. It's not terrible. You don't really want to tell students, we're going to delete your video because it's not that great. Right? <laughs> so one of the real challenges that I want to talk about in the end is, is Wikipedia as it exists now as a community, a conducive place for trying video that may not look great, for experimenting, for making mistakes, I would argue it's actually a really, really hard environment to do that. And that might be a bad mismatch for this video project, that we might need another space for experimentation and not just Wikipedia articles. One of my students did a really nice close-up of a bee flying around in a flower, a video, and put it on the bee article. It got removed within 10 minutes saying, we have very high standards here for pictures in this article. Basically saying, for the last five years, we've had this core set of editors you know, curate this article and we put in the pictures that were, were needed. We don't want your video. So that was not a great experience for my student. All right, so that's what we have to look forward to. If we start asking people to try out these things, they may hit this brick wall of, go away. We worked on this article for five years. We don't need that video to muck up our work. So that's, this is pretty you know, slow going. We want to try to find better videos to put in here. Right? So here's one that is one of my experiments on how do you film a wall? Right? It doesn't move, there's not a lot going on. So this is a segment of the Berlin Wall in Los Angeles. And I just said, we just got to go close ups. Right? There's a wide shot of the wall. Here's some close ups showing textures, showing detail. Obviously there's no real soundtrack to be 
meaningful here, so you can put some background music in there. Okay, so this is something that Wiki loves monuments or other folks can try out when trying to shoot static objects, buildings, statues, and things like that. And then something we also experimented is what should the end of the video be? Right? Should we bookend it with logos, with the CC by SA licensing information, the authorship, the date, the time, the location? So these are all things we're still experimenting with, and feel free to chime in on the wiki page on that. But we thought this was not a bad model, because some people might be downloading these videos without the article, and you need to have all this information in there on how to find uh, the metadata for this. This is another example of one of the most famous artists in Los Angeles. So. We shot this video of their this kinetic sculpture in the middle of Los Angeles uh, County Museum of Art here. But again, what are the complications with doing this, filming this? Wiki loves monuments, people probably know. I go to a museum, I shoot it. Yeah, I'm inside, I need permission. Fortunately, we spent a month emailing back and forth the artist, and then finally after explaining what, he knew what Wikipedia was, he didn't know what Commons was, he didn't know what Creative Commons was. In the end, he said, oh, yeah, sure, you can, do that. So it did take some back and forth, but eventually if you contact these folks, they'll say, oh yeah, I'd love to have that video in my article. So if you look at Chris Burden's article on Wikipedia, um, you'll find a video like this. How do you spell it? What's that? How do you spell the same subject? Chris Burden. There you go. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> ah, metadata, yes. So again, but something to watch out for, no recognizable faces in there, right? If you really want to be particular, the right of publicity of human subjects, you really want to, you know, be safe on the in that area. Go ahead. So, but can maybe can you provide a? Or maybe we should provide a paper you can have if you cannot avoid having faces to this. Like in, in German, you you sign that like you I'm okay with using my That's right. a release like a legal paper. Right, a model what they call model release form in the U.S. But yeah, I think that's something for photos already existing. So that I mean. I mean the legal stuff is different from nation to country to country, so maybe this could be provided on that page also. The right, absolutely. And you know, some of the, I think most people in Hollywood now actually have an iPad app, which is basically a model release form, and when they shoot someone, they'll just hold the iPad there and say, please sign this so I can use your likeness. Um, I guess you could build it into the Commons uploader if you really wanted to. But that's actually a, a, a sensitive part that Actually, we should be doing that more with photos in Commons right now. But with video, it's even more apparent that we should be doing this. Um, just to show you some other ones here, this is Airstream. So if you look at Airstream, which is a type of uh, mobile home trailer in the United States. This is how you film static objects. And then one last one I want to show you. This is a great one, this one. The spring roll assembly was done by one of the students at Alverno, and she filmed every single step along the way of assembling a uh, spring roll, which is one of the best videos they did that year. And the last one I thought I'd show you because it's got relevance here is that it, Brewster Kale at the Internet Archive. So last time I visited there, I just said, let me film an interview with him showing the Internet Archive. So this is in the Brewster Kale article now. Come on in. You're going to show okay. You. This is a scanning center of the Internet Archive. Hi, guys. Um, there, we operate about 30 of these in eight countries. Most of them are smaller. A couple of them are larger. Um, in this one, we're doing books, microfilm, and movie film. Um, we designed and built our own scanners. Uh, we tried the robots, couldn't get them to work. Um, da, 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 da. Um, there's two professional grade digital cameras, museum grade lighting, um, and they raise and lower um, glass um, to go and get a really good image, flatten the image. Um, you can go and take more pictures and then try to get rid of it with software, but it ends up looking, well, kind of crappy. Well, kind of like, well, Google Books. Um, so we were really interested in getting really, really good images. Um, and then we crop DSQ, upload, process them for about 12 hours to go and do optical character recognition, uh, as well as compression into different formats, PDF, uh, for, then we make it available to the uh, Mo Mobi for Kindle, and uh, different kinds of EPUBs for the Nooks, and da 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 da. And if it's public domain, anybody can download them in bulk. We actively encourage people like Aaron Schwartz to go and download millions of books at a time. Uh, we publish tools on how to do it. Um, this is what libraries are for. Um, so we think that there's a um, reason that we should be um, accessible in bulk as well as onesie twosie. This is a, a movie scanner. You know, this is 
YouTube before YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. These are these are home movies uh, often, and they give a very um, direct view of what it is the 20th century was like. We have a very visual generation, but I think of my generation, myself, is very literate, literature oriented towards imagining and understanding what the world was like. But if you can basically use moving images as a mechanism to understand what the world was like that communicates with this new generation. Has anyone here been in the Internet Archive before? Some of you? The real place. But a lot of you probably use the archive.org site. Right? So it's a pretty amazing operation they have there. And uh, you know, they put all their servers and everything in their own space there. So Brewster Kale, who's been a speaker at Wikimania in the past, you know, that's just the tour he gives every week at the Internet Archive, but now you have it in the Wikipedia article. Right? So that was just taken with one camera and you know, interview, and then close-ups later on that were edited together. Right? So yes? But, but in there, you have like 20 faces. It's a good question. I know. I mean, I'm, it's a good thing that I know a lot of those folks, so I know that they wouldn't have a problem with it. But you're right. I absolutely should get model release forms if I were being complete about that. Right. 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 But this is a big problem with video. Right. Anytime you have someone's likeness on there, you run that risk of saying, right of publicity, I don't want that picture of me or that video of me up there. And this is nothing compared to showing logos of companies in your video. And are the, yeah, go ahead. Are these stored in the model systems? I mean, I'm sorry? Are these stored? I mean, you have to present it to someone. I mean, is it like OCRS? You know, still right, exactly. And I don't think there is a workflow right now for, for storing model lease forms. I think the only thing we really have now is OTRS. If something's registered in OTRS, you can maybe correlate it with the content. But OTRS is via email. I mean, you have to scan like, pages that you wrote where they signed? Or? We have no good workflow for that right now. So right. I think that's a big to-do for all this multimedia and, stuff. And so maybe tell Fabrice Florin and their crew at the foundation. And, this and, is something we need to look at. And the other important question is what about the technical issues? I mean, you have to uh, transform it to OGG, right. otherwise it won't be useful. Now, Absolutely. Many, most of the browsers, as far as you know, they're not support OGG, or you have to have some kind of uh, another program installed right. in your computer. So, do you know if the foundation has any plan to change it, or I don't know? Like, I don't know so, we at the Multimedia Roundtable, Rob can maybe answer some of those things, but it is complex. Um, let me just show you a few slides because I'm running short on time about that format issue because we haven't even hit on the technical issues. These are just the yes. capture issues. I get all sorts of questions when, when, when I, have, I do like twice a month lecture on Wikipedia and I always ask uh, what, what is the next step in Wikipedia. And there's always some smart guy saying, oh, we want to have more videos in Wikipedia. So I tell them, okay, it's, it's a very nice idea, but, but technically it's very difficult. Absolutely. So, I mean, so this is the big problem. Yeah is that the open source standards, WebM and OGG, are the only ones that Commons accepts now for video to be stored and served up. How many people here have used WebM or OGG before? Okay, you are very unusual because you ask pretty much any person working in film and TV, they look at that and they say, what? No, I use, I use AVCHD, MPEG-2, MPEG-4, XVID, AVI, MOV, these formats. I have never heard of your crazy things in called Hog Viewer. I we a lot of videos. Video 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 we had to store it. our videos in YouTube in order to be accessible. I mean, right. we, didn't put, we didn't put it in the, in the comments because we had to transform them and right. all the media we worked with didn't understand how to enter it. So we so. put it in YouTube and just put links. To right, links so to Rob maybe can answer some of that. Yeah, yeah uh, so it's, it's a complicated issue and, and um, having, uh, supporting those formats is going to, it, it, is, is something that we're looking into the licensing implications of, but um, it, it could involve considerable expense to the foundation, so it's one of those things that, um, and because the, because the um, there's a number of patent holders who are claiming um, necessary patents on this stuff, we, you know, we have to, just, it's one of the things we need to do is decide, do we support these formats? Um, uh, do we want to support these formats even though they are not free formats? Um, okay. And that, that, that the patent holders are claiming that, that they uh, hold exclusive right to um, the, the use of
accept that. Well, so I, I, would make it, I would make it a little bit more easier. It's not a legal question. It's like a, you should have a website hosted uh, by uh, Wikimedia where you can upload any forward and get it uh, converted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, I'll be able to do that. A YouTube too. No, no, there, there, there are all on that conversion. Which can you use? There are all on that conversion. Yeah, but there should be like a, like, this is your Wikimedia page where you can convert your video. All right, so we do have to wrap up this session, unfortunately. I'd love to spend an hour and a half. I had an hour and a half at WikiSim on this. Um, but it is complex, as Rob said. The ideal situation would be you upload it to some server, like YouTube-like, that is just a Swiss Army knife. You can do whatever conversion you need to. But it's more complex. You need to license stuff. You need to pay people lots of money to do this kind of thing. Well, but I just to, the they didn't try to assert a bunch of focus That's true. Yeah. So let's just finish this up, and then I'll uh, give you time for some questions, and then we'll go off. So again, articles upgraded. These are some samples of those. Um, Wikimakes video, you know, go to that page if you're interested. I'd love to have more conversation about this. Define some sample video patterns, identify topics, write for video. Um, if you're experienced in shooting or just want to learn, look at the areas for training novices in shooting and editing. Um, we even talked about editing. Oh my God. So, you know, at one point, Kaltura was in partnership with the Wikimedia Foundation. Kaltura had the best web editor based collaborative video editing solution out there. That seems to have just dropped on the floor. They're just not interested in that product anymore. So we are still left with the big need that all this activity is me shooting, me editing, me uploading. That Brewster Kale video I thought was pretty good. I thought it dragged in the middle, like it was like an extra five, 10 seconds too long. If you want to go in there and help cut it out, you can't, because I hold all the source video, right? We need to solve that problem yes. too. What so, Rob it can is, maybe add some more. Yeah, it, it is open source, and, and uh, we're still talking to the Kaltura folks, but it's uh, um, they, they don't have as much time to dedicate to uh, Wikimedia-related stuff as they used to. They, they, they had Michael Dale, I think, pretty much exclusively working on this in around the 2009-2010 time frame. Um, and, and, you know, and they're still working on a lot of the, so a lot of the core software associated with this stuff. Um, uh, but uh, as far as the integration into our website, that's something that, um, that, that they would need to us now. Right, it's stalled, but on the bright side, there is now a multimedia team at the Wikimedia Foundation headed by Fabrice Florin, right? So this is hopefully something that that team will address. Yeah. Can anyone recommend, uh, for those of us who do make videos, like good open source uh, video editing, you know, freeware video editor, anybody uh, know any names to throw out there? The, like, the, the only thing I will mention is OpenShot is a open source video editor. It had a dormant period for a little while, and they just got Kickstarter funds to do a Mac and Windows version. Manuel, last thing. But, by the way, OpenShot is a fork of Capital Hack, which what we are using in Germany at the moment, and actually having uh, workshops on it, getting when? people trained to use it. In Germany. And I would like uh, to. If I may advertise, sure. <laughs> uh, we will have a talk on Wiki TV, which is maybe a bad name <laughs> because we are actually talking about the same things here. And I have a proposal on collaborative editing based on Kettle Live. So something yours is tomorrow. Me, the server, and a few. Okay, so your 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 session is tomorrow. What time? Uh, I think four. Tomorrow, I think at two o'clock. Two. Okay, so go to. Manuels, I'll be there. Maybe we can talk video among people who want to talk video. Okay, thanks. Two forty-five. Virtual dub. What's that? Virtual dub editing software for Windows. What's it called? Virtual dub. Virtual dub. Okay. That's a TPL license. Right. Okay. Thank you, folks.